Hi, I'm Tammy Camp. I am the CEO of Stronghold. Stronghold is a payments and financial services company that allows developers to move payments in the most efficient way possible um, through a simple API. Um, how we're transitioning to, from Web 2 to Web 3 is that we interoperate with uh, traditional Rails as well as more po modern payment networks like, um, you know, ones that you would see in Web 3, like, you know, cryptocurrencies like a, like a, a Solana and a Stellar and a Ripple and chains that are more payments focused. Um, we allow our developers um, and our businesses to earn rewards for the, the more transactions that they um, put through our network. Uh, so, you know, the common theme between Web 2 and Web 3 is that we still need to move value around, um, and we're able to do that in, in both um, ecosystems. So I have a quick question for you, Tammy. Before, before we dive too deep, um, what was your transition from Web 2 to Web 3, and what was that like? Um, well, I've been in crypto. I've been in the blockchain space since uh, 2013. Um, used to be the first head of growth at Stellar. So, I I think it, you know, Web three kind of more happened to me. Whether you know, it just where the market took us. I think that um, as a company, if you wanted to define what Web three is, it's you know, everybody having a piece of ownership, you know, within. Um, uh, when it, within the ecosystem that they, they, they have. And so I think that once we started implementing our rewards programs via crypto and allowing people to, um, you know, stake that value, um, I think that was right around the transition of when we were going to Web3. And so I would say that uh, we've been in the space. Odd. Um, our, our token was issued in 2018. So we've been around for quite some time. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Just some context is always good. I'd, I'd love to hear of where speakers come from. Yeah. yeah. So tell us, tell us more about the, what, you know, in, uh, at Stronghold, I'm, I'm curious, you know, what's the discourse you've had around, you know, bringing developers up to speed in the Web3 space who may have not traditionally been working in it? Um, and, you know, how does that relate to the product and the, uh, and the value that Stronghold is building and bringing? Right, so it's it's payments. Um, I it's it's a very similar developer experience that you would have with any other developer API platform, and I think you know that's really the key here is to you know have these tools available in the way that everyone is used to seeing them. Um, we've abstracted away all of you know the the blockchain and the and the cryptocurrency aspects of it um, so it's just easier for the user to solve the problem that they're trying to solve um, the, the developer to solve the problem that they're solving for which is to accept payments um, transfer the value and be able to um, you know offboard those payments off ramp that, that that value into um, a bank account or a wallet of their choosing. Um, so the key is here, this is this is so exciting. We're in such an exciting time of Web3 because I think that now with the traction that we have today, um, we're just seeing more, um, we're seeing more tools that are, that, that just look like everyday developer tools, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that's where it needs to be, in my opinion. <laughs> Yeah, that's not, that's something that um, Monica was touching on earlier around the the kind of importance of UI UX and familiarity with development tools um, for people coming into the space. So I, I'm curious how you know what efforts has um, has Stronghold made to kind of bring that to the you know more than anything, not so much the you know the customer or user side, but for the you know the developer and onboarding side. Um, what efforts have been made from Stronghold and you know to make that familiar. <laughs> For people jumping in, right. Um, I mean, like I said previously, it's just you know our APIs look very similar to um, you know any other payment uh, developer tool out there. So it's just transfer of value, um, you know, payment acceptance, um, creating plugins. You know, I think a, a big benefit to like what we're doing. It just it. It, it 
it's traditional. <laughs> I mean, right. it really is like it really it, it comes down to uh, the use UI side of of things and the way it and actually we spend a lot of time on this is language, 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 using the same terminology, um, using the same terminology to describe a thing in the traditional world as you would in the blockchain ecosystem. Um, you know, staking, a lot of people don't know what that is, probably in the, the Web2 world, um, or like a, a D5, you know, a, a yield, like your little farming. Um, that's a better example. But if you just like, in simple language, just like this is, you know, the, the interest, right, that you, you would earn, you know, otherwise in a savings or bank account, um, and, you know, just presenting it, just presenting it in terms that are familiar with what is used in the broader world. It's gotcha. really key. And, 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 in the, in, in the, so, um, you know, I was looking through the site earlier and, and, you know, the customers and the, the services that, um, obviously are kind of a mix between, again, some of the companies that spawned up in the past five years around crypto and blockchain technologies. And there are obviously others that are much more traditional. <laughs> um, I think I saw Gap, maybe, um, uh, as one of those um, on the website, or, um, and JP Morgan Chase, obviously, who I think they've, they've kind of started to delve into their own thing. You know, what is the, you know, what is the value prop, right, for developers? What's, what's you know, why come into this space? Um, and my kind of second question is you know, the customers that you face day to day, some of those, and, and Jeff touched on this before, is some of those are going to know what's happening, um, probably have a much deeper insight into this space, like people like Coinbase, right, or Stellar, like you mentioned. Um, but then some of them are not at all. <laughs> and so how, you know, what does that education process look like with some of these customers? Um, who are, you know, have very large companies, right? Who are doing a lot. Um, so, yeah, I, I just love some more insight into that because it's it's kind of a it's a world we're living in now where we're seeing all these larger companies step in, and I'm sure a lot of them don't really know the full capabilities, right, that are available in this space. And so, you know, how does Strongholder yourself and your team kind of um, work with these companies to better understand what the offering is? Yeah. So. Um you know, we've really been lucky. I'm, I, I'll, I'll go back to kind of um, IBM specifically. I think that's what you were referring to. Um, so, you know, we early on in 2018, we were the very first. We were the, the company behind the IBM stablecoin. Um, and all of these companies that come to us have a very specific use case that they're trying to solve for that doesn't already exist in the market today. So in that specific example, it was to you know, create a real-time payment network for uh, cross-border payments at a wholesale level. Meaning today, when uh, you're kind of settling between banks, right, between financial institutions, you're doing it with a wire. Now, with wires, you don't have certainty of time. You don't have certainty of cost. Um, and those two things, uh, and it's not real time. So those three things, not real time, certainty of cost, and then time, like when it will show up. Because sometimes when you're settling international wires, they can take, you know, two, three days, depending on what corresponding, uh, like corresponding banks they have. So any that we've been approached for how we go in to solve a market is not, it, it, we don't ever take the approach of like build it and they will come. It is a very specific use case, um, you know, in which there, there just isn't, you know, another solution in the market for. Um, and so we were really lucky with, with IBM and we got to work very, very closely with them with building this proprietary thing. Um, so, hmm. I, I could, no, go ahead, Jeff, go ahead. So, so as you've been evolving in the space and as, uh, you know, regulatory bodies around the world pop in, 
Uh, how have you had to change? Have have you have you had to change your approach at all? Um, dealing with uh, compliance, KYC, AML, uh, dealing with uh, different jurisdictions, is it uh, had any effect on uh, the core product offerings that you have? Um, I don't, so as it relates to you know coming up with new compliance policies and KYC, absolutely, one hundred percent. You know you need to be. Uh, you know, you need to have programs in place um, for each jurisdiction that you're serving, right? Um, especially when you're at that level, you know, when you're dealing with, you know, banks, central banks, and, you know, large enterprise, you know, top 50, um, you know, enterprise companies. Um, absolutely. You, you, uh, you know, you need to create um, each specific network governance for each use case, right? That does right. not go away and that will never go away. Now, did it ever, uh, did it, did it change the core product? No, it doesn't. It doesn't change the core product because, you know, what we offer and what I think is so like delightful about blockchain, about some of these faster payment, uh, I mean, faster uh, cryptocurrencies and, and blockchains is that uh, so for for these new current these newer blockchains like Solana and Ripple and Stellar and um in in the ones like that it's not uh, you don't you don't change the the underlying technology it's just you're changing the compliant the the operational functionality around it. Uh, I I appreciate that I, I happen to be uh one of a group of people who are, are providing advice to the government of Bermuda and. Uh, I've been watching and watch, watching policies evolve and seeing how different governments and different agencies handle payments and how sensitive things are. So it, it's nice to know that at the core of the product offering can be, you know, be stay stay on the vision. And it's on the edge where you just have to worry about the implementations of whatever is needed to be compliant in the countries uh, or you know regions and jurisdictions that, you, that your clients are operating in. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So cool. I, I have I have kind of a maybe well how much time maybe we have well one question we have time for others but I, I saw this come in which is you know what are the challenges that um, that you're facing as a leader that that are you know have not been solved yet right what what's the future look like you know when you when you look at hiring when you look at bringing new developers engineers and new products you know what what is the 2023 2024 kind of outlook as to where you have to build so let me repeat the question you want to know like what you know, the biggest challenge for developers are for the, in the next 18 months. Yeah. What are some of those unsolved challenges that you're going to be kind of focusing on? Yeah, if you can speak uh, to them. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's, it's very relevant. I think that, um, you know, it's really exciting right now. There's more and more, there's more excitement than there's ever been in this space. And there's been more um, developers curious about, um, you know, uh, Web three, um, you know what I'm seeing today is it, it. It really does go back to that language problem, or um, you know, people just trying to understand understand it all and how it works. Right? Um, there's there's definitely a, a big gap there. Or at least you know some some of our you know developers that we're working in, um, you know, just trying to understand how things work. I'll give you a good example because. You know, I was at this conference maybe like five, like five months ago, um, where you know a lot of developers, you know, because Bitcoin is so popular and it's been around for so long, um, every like a lot of the developers and just the general population think that all bit all cryptocurrencies function like Bitcoin. So they're like, oh, like you know, you have to have miners. Oh, you have to, you know, it's proof of work. Um, and so I think that, uh, you know, a lot, most people don't know that, you know, you can have pre mined tokens. You don't need to have mining software. You don't have to, um, you know, have, you know, proof of work. You have other things like making and consensus and things like that. And so I think that, um, you know, the education, uh, you know, it's just, it's not there yet just because, just the general population thinks everything works like Bitcoin. Gotcha. Okay. So it sounds like a lot of education and um, is going to be needed for some of the people starting in this industry. 
which may be obvious, but that sounds like a big challenge for a lot of companies building right now. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It, it's hard. You're you're taking like very complex, like you know the way that you value around um, and the way that you know networking works and um, all these different functionalities. It's very hard uh, to uh, translate that in a way that is consumable by uh, the masses. Okay. Thank you. I guess we should start to wrap up. Uh, Tammy, is there, uh, be, being that you've been helped build this company and we're going, uh, do you have any words of encouragement for others that are on that fence of, uh, well, because you've been in the Web3 world for a while and you've dealt with a lot of legacy. Uh, for people that are listening to this on the replay, listening to in the audience today who are considering they're implementing a Web3 strategy, uh, any words of encouragement for people who are thinking about taking the next step but haven't done there yet, haven't made it yet? Um, yeah, it's a, it, we're still in the beginning stages. It's a super exciting time to learn and collaborate. Um, that's one of the best things about this ecosystem is that everybody is so willing to share information and to collaborate with, um, you know, help solve the problem that you're trying to solve for. Um, I would say that yeah, be curious. Um, be curious as much as you can, um, because you know, folks that are you know uh, entering into this space early, like all the people that are listening here today, um, are you know going to have a huge impact on the future. Well, thank, thank you, Tammy. Thanks for um, for joining us. Thanks for being part of a Blue Lava 2022. I remember Mary Meeker in 1997 said the internet was in the second inning. And then someone followed up and said, but it was raining. And I would say in so many ways, it feels like uh, we're back in the first inning of a brand new ball game. And uh, maybe it's middle of the game, but it's you know, middle of the first inning. But we're a ways to go before uh, things get, get, get um, it just the, the opportunity is vast and unbounded. Uh, so 